Hello and Happy New Year and welcome back to the Wendell Effect, our first episode for 2023. This is Brandon Wendell with you and I'll be going over my view of the U.S. financial markets here in our video. Just before we get started, I need to remind you we are not broker dealers or investment advisors. Take a look at this information from an educational standpoint, not telling you advice or holding particular securities, committee, any personalized recommendations. There's always risk involved in the markets. We can never eliminate it. We can only try to manage and uh, be aware of the risk and future uh, performances or past performance is no indication of future results and there's also um, you got to remember we are not subject to training restrictions so we got a position of security initiate one at any time make sure you stay in touch with me if you got any questions or comments anything about the markets or about the videos you can always hit me up at brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com I am on Twitter nearly every single day, so you can reach me there as well at TraderBW. And also, obviously, you can find this video, The Wendell Effect, on YouTube. So, for today, we're just going to do our normal schedule with the weekly market analysis on the equity index futures, moving on to energy futures, and then finally the sector analysis. So, um, oh, before I forget, I want to give you a heads up. I am going to be doing a live session in uh at fxstreet.com so make sure you sign up for that it's free you can see right here it says identifying trends and currency pairs on tuesday the 10th of january and that will be at 10 a.m eastern so all you have to do is just go to this web page or just go to fxstreet.com basically the easiest way to find me again is just go to fxstreet.com and you go to the video section you'll see the show schedule and that's where you'll find it, identifying trends in currency pairs. So if you trade currency markets, you might want to check that out. Even if you're not trading currencies, it'll still be beneficial for you because the same techniques apply to stock trading, options trading, and the uh, futures trading as well. So you can definitely take advantage of that. Now, if you happen to subscribe the week after, or is it two weeks actually, 24th, I'll be doing two webinars, one for TradeStation, which I'll get you a link for in a little bit, and another one for... Uh, FX Street again, but this one's a premium version. So it says use a modified RSI to filter trades. Anyway, that being said, let's get back over to where we were looking at these markets. We're going to kick it off looking at January 8th or the week of for the equity markets, starting off with the S&P as I usually do. You can see we're still in a decline. We've had these rallies, but we're still failing to get above 60. So we're in very bearish territory. However, it's kind of interesting. We put in a low way below 40, put in another low. And that was just barely below 40. And now we are trying to put in a low here on this weekly chart. And I think officially we did because we made higher highs, uh, but we never got below 40. So that's a first sign of the trend starting to fail, if you will. Uh, the bearish trend failing and possibly getting ready to turn bullish pretty soon. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that if it's actually going to change. Dropping down to the daily chart, you can see that we're still failing to get above 60 with our highs, which is still very, very bearish. So this could indeed just be a pause before we decline even further. So I'm not sure if, yeah, I've got weekly demand here on the S&P around 2,500. And I don't really see anything else of great quality. There's a little bit right here at about 3,000, but doesn't look as strong as what you see at 2,500. So we may not be at the bottom of the bear market yet. That's what I'm seeing. Anyway, on the daily time frame, we've got some overhead supply that we might contend with going on to this week at 39.97 to 40.90. So keep an eye out for that and how much momentum we have. If we get above 60 in the RSI, we'll typically break through those supply zones. And then we can, you know, top out around 4,300 at the next zone. But if the momentum dies off, then we're not getting through the supply, meaning if we rally into price, but the RSI is still below uh, 60 on, the R yeah, on that RSI, look for prices to continue to move down towards the 30, 38, and possibly, as I said, all the way down 2,500 before this is done. On the four hour chart, you can see we started off kicking uh, to the upside, breaking out of the sideways channel that we've been in for quite some time. Since the near uh, third week, I believe, was December, we entered the sideways channel. We're still in it. You know, we'll have to see if this is legit for the breakout, if it's a false breakout, but there were some warnings for it. You can see we put in a low in price, but couldn't go below 40. That's a very bullish signal. So we do pop to the upside here. And my next target to the upside is at 40.25. Remember, the weekly is showing that we're not in as strong of a downtrend anymore, and the daily is starting to show some life to the upside. So make a small rally here. Looking at the percent change chart, we're trying to figure out who is our leader, and it's been the NASDAQ to the downside. You can see the NASDAQ put in a higher low and higher high and started moving up. 
And we got the Dow as our leader to the upside, so that'll usually tell us when we'll top out. So diving into the NASDAQ, on the continuous contract, you can see uh, we're trying to make very similar lows, but we're losing bearish momentum here as well, just like we saw on the S&P. So that's a little concerning for the bears. Might be some relief rallies coming for the bulls. Now, this first supply zone, 12,293, has been tested, but barely. So there's still a lot of selling pressure there that can hold us down once we get up there. Looking at the daily chart, we also have a supply zone that we're possibly going to control or re sorry, retrace back to. You can see we have a positive divergence where prices made lower lows, indicator couldn't. So that usually indicates a bounce coming. We'll see if it gets up to 11,729, but that's a great short entry possibility for the NASDAQ with our target being 10,175. On the four hour chart, pretty much same picture. You know, I was looking to get short here at about 11,729. It looks like it might be a little bit lower than that. We got 11,328 to 389 as a possible supply here on the smaller time frame. Now, this is a good looking zone, but you gotta wonder if it's just kind of leftover selling pressure from back here. This area in, what was that, about the 19th of December, right around there, it didn't form an actual zone because it's missing a few pieces, but you can't, you can't deny that there was good selling pressure and a good imbalance there. And that might've been the origin of the supply, which means if we get back up there, there may not be any kind of selling pressure left and prices could rally all the way up towards 12,000. So keep an eye out for that if the markets um, can hold up or start to turn. We also have earnings season coming up pretty soon. That's going to be a big catalyst to drive us up or drive us down, depending on how we react to the earnings estimates. Looking at the weekly continuous chart of the Dow, we actually broke to the upside out of this downward cha uh, channel, kind of like a megaphone. It was expanding on both sides. Broke out, retested, which is very common when you break out. You usually come back and retest where you broke out from, and then continue on in the trend. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. We had the breakout retest. It seems to be holding, and it's actually a little rally-based rally demand zone there as well. So it looks very, very bullish still. The only issue is right here with the momentum. And that may be our little signal, signal to let us know what's going to happen. If prices come up and retest the prior highs here on this peak, but the RSI doesn't go higher, then look out below. We're going to drop. And remember, this is what's carrying everything higher. So if the strong index drops, everything else will follow. Going down to the daily time frame, you can see that we're having a little more struggle with this trend. Before, when we were moving up, we were nice and strong, getting lots of bullish momentum. Now we're struggling, struggling to go up in price, even though we did break out today and from Friday, I'm recording the Sunday evening. However, we didn't have enough momentum to get us into bullish territory either. So this is suggesting sideways movement and a definite risk to the trend at this point. And down the four hour chart, if we're gonna see a turn, most likely it'll happen right around this 340 area. See 342, 19, 343.38 for our zone. So if we move up into that origin of that big selling pressure, uh, we might see some sort of divergence, but uh, it looks like, you know, if it, if it is above 60, even if we get a divergence, it's likely to be just a correction, not necessarily a reversal trend, but it is a wall of selling pressure we're reaching up into. Moving on to the Russell and the continuous contract here for the weekly chart. Again, same pictures, making lower highs, lower lows, having troubles getting into bullish territory, but also had trouble getting into bearish territory on the most recent low. So the tide might be changing a little bit here for the Russell as well, seeing a little more bullish pressure. But we do have this tested zone in 1987 to was that, 2002. Oh, no, sorry, 2082. And then right above it, there's another zone as well. Going into the week, uh, weekly, no, this, sorry, this is mislabeled. This was the weekly. This is actually the daily continuous contract. We actually have a supply zone we're very close to right now at 1870 to 1863. I know the weekly had a little bit higher, but this one looks pretty good. You have rally, base, and drop. So we'll see if we come back in to retest that. Uh, you know, depending on where the RSI is, if it's above 60, we get through. If it's below 60, we're likely to go sideways and possibly just dump and drop very quickly. We don't have any demand nearby to hold us up at all anyway. 
So you can let that one ride for a little bit with the trailing stop. So let's see. That was the daily. Here's the four hour. Pretty much same picture. 1833, 1842. It's kind of diving inside of this area to see where is the next zone there it is so 1833 1842 watch for that we're going to be above 40 on this i'm sorry 60 on the rsi on this time frame but the higher time frame might be showing us that trend weakness and that'll be a good signal or we might even get divergence too price makes higher highs indicator makes lower or same highs Moving on to the energy markets, we see weekly chart of crude oil. We're just kind of starting to base a little bit right near this weekly demand. We still have good bearish momentum. We don't really have any kind of bullish momentum helping us go up. Um, so much to say there. It's just same old, same old. You look at the daily chart on crude oil, and it's still very bearish. You know, we did finally dip below 40 again, and we had lots of selling pressure to get us in there. So instead of rallying to the upside, it looks as though we got impulse down correction up starting to impulse down we've already paused at the 61.8 percent extension of the previous move which i'm sorry it's this little impulse here so we we'll retrace we're likely to impulse and if we repeat the last move is 68.54 if we don't honestly it'll be a little surprise but it could mean that the bigger time frame trend is getting weak as well four hour chart we should get a little bit of a pullback but not much Okay, we're seeing a divergence, but we never got confirmation. We put in a low right here, but we couldn't get a stay above 40. So again, that's very, very bearish for this market and telling us that we're likely to just see a small retracement upwards before we start selling off quite rapidly. On the weekly chart of uh, net gas, very bearish. It's actually just hit the 100% duplication of the previous impulse that I had laid out for us a while back. On the daily chart, we should expect a small bounce. I mean, we just hit a target. You're going to get some profit taking before it goes lower. And this is the positive divergence I was referring to where prices make lower lows, but the indicator makes the same or higher lows. So that's a positive divergence, bullish divergence, if you will, suggesting we might rally a little bit. And as I'm looking at this right now, it looks as though we have drop, base, base, drop as possible supply at 50% retracement, 5.030. Or even here, drop, base, base, and eh, it's not the greatest. I would stick with the higher one right here. So looking for supply right around 5, even to about 5.5. Right in there. On the four-hour chart, let's see. It doesn't show much difference. I mean, this is the five area I was talking about, 4.892. 4.968. Sorry, Lucy's looking at my leg again, my little puppy here. Um, okay, so on the uh, NQ, NG, sorry, on the 240 minute chart, you can actually see a couple of supply zones overhead. So if we rally back up, uh, be careful, do it with confirmation, meaning you don't enter as prices hit the zone, but enter as they turn and leave the zone. So you have more confirmation that the zone is working. So we've got several different areas that we might turn around in. Moving on to the weekly on gasoline, not a whole lot going on here. We did try to rally up again, very, very weak in price. And we didn't even touch demand before we bounced. So it'll be interesting to see if we can come down and test that 2.0 area. It seems to be what we're doing right now is moving down towards it. And still in a bearish trend. So making lower highs, lower lows. Got to look for shorts until that changes. Now on the daily chart, Oops, where are we going here? On the daily chart, we do have a couple of demand zones we're running down towards, and you see we became a little more bullish here. And typically, if you go up and become a little more bullish, um, you know, you're going to see it because you don't go below 40 on the RSI on the pullbacks, and that's where we're trying to hold right now. So on gasoline, again, we got uh, a little bit of demand. We might actually try to make a move to the upside here, so we'll just have to kind of keep that in mind. On the weekly chart, again, very bearish but on the daily you see that little bit of bullishness here and actually those fibonacci targets shouldn't be used uh we are going to be making another dip into this demand before we can bounce so that's where you would actually put the fib extensions uh but overall you know we're not very powerful to the upside so it'll be interesting to see if we can actually even make a new high or if this was just a small pause before we continue lower going down to the four hour chart we are pushing into this demand uh, the problem is, you know, we're going into a deep and we're, we're getting a little divergence, but it didn't bounce yet. So if we do get any kind of a bounce, honestly, I'm looking more at a shorting opportunity here. So let me go back to my charts and take a look. 
So here we are on the four hour charts of gasoline, as you can see. And honestly, on the daily chart, I don't think they're going to rally that much. And on this four hour, it looks like this is going to be a good opportunity to get back in on the short side or here. But the lower one looks really good. We have drop base drop with follow through. So that looks as though that's what we're going to be doing here is pulling back a little bit and then continue our impulses to the downside. As far as downside targets, you know, it's not really like there's anything strong here. I might ignore all of it, to be honest with you. It's a very weak move upwards. So looking down and back a little bit further, we do have a demand there at 210. So there's my trade idea is from 2.35, 2.37 down to 2.10. Moving along, we've got heating oil stuck in a downward channel, as you can see, just bouncing back, bouncing back and forth, very, very weak, and looks like it's likely to continue. You know, we might slow down a little bit. You see on the weekly chart, we're not getting below 40, and the same thing on the daily chart, we're having struggles getting back below 40. This could just be a little pause before continuing, or I don't really see it as a reversal of the trend yet. It just doesn't seem right the way things are looking right now on the charts. Going down to the four hour, you can see we bounce off this little demand area. We actually had a little divergence where prices made the same lows. The indicator made a higher low, so we did a small bounce. Might be near to finish. That's not really a good zone. The, the better supply zone to re-engage on the short side is 3.1818 or to 3.2588. So look for that as your short entry, and your new target would be 2.7. Uh, well, technically, I'm sorry, 2.8227. What I'm looking at right there. So moving along into the stock market, we're going to take a look at different sectors and see what's performing, what's not, and a couple trade ideas for us as well. Over the last six months, still being led by inflation pressures. That's taking the energy sector much higher. Uh, we're also seeing some materials and industrials doing well, which is a little unusual when the markets are going down. But there's been some shining lights throughout the darkness. Going into the past week, you can see that it's been somewhat bullish across the board. Really, the healthcare and staples are not as hot as the um, discretionary type of securities, such as communication services and industrials and materials. So that last week was during a bullish rally, and really you're seeing the sectors that would normally lead us kind of out of the bottom is performing well. It'll be interesting to see if that lasts long term or if once the markets start diving again, if we get a complete reversal move into the safe havens. Looking at the heat map, um, not really much going on there. This is year to date, which is basically the well, year and a, or sorry, week and a half right here. And overall, still somewhat red. You know, that's kind of what's leading us. And you notice some of the healthcare or health technology, and actually that's more of a consumer staple, J and J. They're doing well, which again is a defensive play. So the past week's performance, you can see extremely bearish overall. Anyway, moving into the individual sectors, we are coming down and we have tested a demand zone from July of 2020. We broke out of our sideways range we were in on consumer discretionaries, getting a small bounce here. As a matter of fact, it's positive divergence where prices have made lower lows and the indicator made the same lows. So that was suggesting we would get a bounce and that's what we're doing. Not sure how high this is going to go. You could probably put in a FIB retracement here. So if we go to the XLY, Daily time frame, again, the way I'd measure this out is right here. I would go from the beginning of the move to the end. Rather than the high, I actually go to the wick, I'm sorry, the body of the candle that started off our move, the, the open of that candle. And I'm going to put this in as a retracement so we can see we had paused at 23.6. You can actually potentially short at one of these levels with your stopping above the next level. But you want to look for confirmation prices are reversing. Things like lower highs and lower lows on the candles on a smaller time frame. So we're on daily. We can go down to maybe 15 or even 60 minute charts to see something like that. Just something is proving it's reversing at those zones. Anyway, uh, daily demand from Ju uh, June 2020 is our next target. Obviously, the July one uh, was already tested, so we're going to go for the fresh one. The commun communication sector, I was looking at a short opportunity on this. You can see it actually only made it to target one, retraced, and it's doing the same thing again. It couldn't even get to target one. If you are in this still, get your profits and get out. Uh, do not try to enter this again. It's not likely to withhold or hold up against that supply zone. We're likely to break through it if we test it again. Okay. 
XOK technology is also diverging. We're looking for a little bounce here this week. So we're going to get another retracement. You see the lower lows in price, but the momentum died off as we we're trying to move down. So you usually get a bounce out of that. I would say we're probably going to get only about a 38% up to maybe 50%. So we should stall out around 127 to 129 before continuing lower to the target at 112. Technically 112.48. So we'll call 112.50. Materials, uh, XLB was enjoying a pretty good week, as you saw, year to date as well. And you can see that we moved up a little bit here towards the end of the week, but we're not out of the woods yet. We did hold above 40 as we went sideways, which is very bullish. So we need to get above 60 on the RSI. If that can happen, then we're likely to meet up with the 84.75 and maybe even the 89.75. This could be a very bullish sector if the momentum piles into it so keep an eye out for that this week the energy markets which is usually wow. what you see is the bullish sorry dogs are barking here hang on anyway you can see this usually leads us at the peak of the market okay and it was very very bullish actually it wasn't that bullish it recovered after i think it was that tuesday then you have wednesday thursday friday um so anyway it just recovered when it had fallen off and didn't quite hit our demand yet. Not, not one of these is actually touching demand. They just came close. But you notice on this low, we did not go below 40 for the first time in a little while here. So that's extremely bullish. Unfortunately, we didn't get into this, but we can watch to see if the sector still goes. There is supply overhead here. Let me draw that out on the XLE. There we go. Again, on the daily chart, not worried about these retracements anymore, really, but I am going to watch this. You have rally, base, base, and drop right here. Okay, so leg in, base, base, leg out. That could be a possible shorting entry in about 90, 22, 92, 25. So watch out for that. This is still technically a fresh demand. I'm not sure if I have any demand below that. You have to look back in time to find it. Anyway, moving along here, we have the XLP consumer staples, which typically rallies or holds up better during bear markets. And it's really not as much this year. We did have a negative divergence, which led to the collapse in price. But recently we had a positive divergence. I forgot to mark. Oh, it's not really. We do have much lower lows in price but not quite as low on the indicator and then we started moving up the same sort of thing here look to see as we do break well we've already broken this high but as we continue to break the high will we get above 60 or will this selling pressure stop us if i go to the xle basically this is what i'm looking at right here you have uh yeah is that the one I just looked at instead of XLB? <laughs> I think I did on XLB. Hang on a second here because I, I made a mistake, I think, looking at the previous one. Oh, I have XLE twice, and that's XLP. Okay. XLB. Yeah, it's not actually a zone. So I was talking about the XLE. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Uh, but this is an area of supply that you can see right here. If I go to the correct chart, XLE. There it is. So you've got 90.22, 92.25 as a possible supply zone to sell off. Consumer staples are trying to rally. Pretty much same pattern. That's what confused me. A lot of these charts are looking very, very similar to each other. We do have a possible, possible uh, bounce going here, but I can't see the trend actually reversing. It just looks like it's going to be a small bounce, and we may stall out as we're coming up towards a little bit of selling pressure. Let's see. XLP. There we are. We have drop base drop right in the middle of all this. It doesn't really have the best move out, so I wouldn't really want to put a lot of weight on that and try to go short on the ETF. I'd look for stronger securities, or I should say in this case, weaker securities because we want to go down and look to short the leaders in, in that sector to the downside and see what's up there. The let's see, next one we're looking at is the XLV or healthcare, and you can see this has just died off. It dropped dramatically from its highs with the negative divergence, even though it broke supply, it kind of went to the peak instead. But we have no momentum as prices are just going just completely sideways with the indicator. Yeah, no momentum. So be patient, wait for a trend to develop before you do anything. The utility market usually does not do well when interest rates are rising. They're heavily leveraged. I've mentioned this before. They issue a lot of bonds or debt, and they try to issue it at lower interest rates because it saves them on paying out. 
and that's our operating capital. But the Fed keeps raising interest rates, and that will typically hurt this sector. So you know, just kind of figure out what the Fed keeps talking about. Are they more hawkish? Are they going to do more rate hikes? Are they more dovish? Are they going to back off? And you'll kind of get an idea of what's going to happen with the utilities. If the interest rates go up, utilities goes down, and basically they're opposite. But so far, it's not really anything to excite me or look for trading here. Financial is also the same picture. We had this little rally in the middle and then trying to rally up again. We we're just barely making it above 60, and it looks like it's going to continue on the financials. We do see some more bullishness to come, possibly pushing up towards the 3747, maybe even beyond eventually. But that sector looks kind of bullish. And finally, XLRE or real estate sector looks bearish. We tried to move up, we're really just kind of drifting sideways. We have very little momentum in both directions. Uh, it looks as though it wanted to drop at first, but like I said, because we didn't get the momentum, instead it's just going sideways. So be patient, stay away from the sector until you find a better opportunity. As far as our trade ideas, we have a couple we're still tracking. Disney, uh, basically we have a new zone. We had this previous entry where we were shorting and it hit target number one. Now we can look for a short entry as price leaves the zone. We're in a zone right now. Do not jump in right away. Wait for it to leave and maybe jump on board at 92.61, even as low as 92.58 or 57, but don't chase it beyond that. Now, as far as targets go, let me go back to the stock here. So I forgot to mark those off, but you do have a 77.49 as your next FIB extension. And then if we're very fortunate, we could drop all the way down to 63.84. Now, I do want to verify there's nothing along the way that can hold us up. Oops. Well, button, there we go. So as I go back, it doesn't really seem to be, right? We're getting into all-time lows, perhaps. There we go. I knew that would be something. Back in 2014, this is much, much cheaper, but it does look like Pretty good daily demand here at about 82 and a Make sure it's authentic and fresh. Uh, there's a little bit of an area back here, so that may, may not be the best zone. You can see that we had drop base, rally base, rally there. So that uh, overshot it. So I'll call it a fresh zone. And then target two down here. And about 7205. So putting this all together again on Disney, looking for shorting opportunities basically. And on the daily time frame, looking to sell as prices leave the zone 9261 down to 9258 uh, at the lowest. And then stop loss about 9550, 9555, somewhere in there. And then target one again, I'm looking for the zone here, not necessarily the fibs. We have 82.50 and then 72.25 or so. Ford Warner was another one. Unfortunately, this one took off without us. You can see we came so close to getting entry, never got there, so never entered. Couldn't anyway. The RSI was telling us it wasn't going to make a new move right away. And sure enough, it didn't. It tried to rally, failed. Then it finally went higher. But oh well, that's the way it goes. CPRI, Capri Holdings, unfortunately, this is a no trade. You can see it was a good idea, but never got to the entry point, and it just broke up to both targets, so we're done. Yum Brands also pulled back, and hopefully you got in on this one. This was one we were watching from a couple weeks back, and we did tease by just barely nicking the zone right there, and then now we've gone a little deeper into it, and it's well on its way up towards target one. So kudos, congratulations if you got that. If not, don't chase. Just wait for opportunity. Speaking of opportunities, Netflix might be presenting one. Netflix from January 9th until February 8th enjoys a bullish move, including that earnings reaction, and it typically goes up 86% of the time over the last 15 years. So there's a little bit bigger time uh, study here. For the last 15 years, if you bought January 9th, got out of February 8th, you made money. Now, there's no guarantee. You can see last year it actually lost, right? But the average win, wow, 13.69%. You can see annualized return, all that stuff. But yeah, overall, this has been a pretty consistent player. So looking at Netflix, there is actually a 
daily demand zone right here. You have rally base rally coming off those lows. So if we can get it back into that area, that's also a Fibonacci retracement, I believe we had. Yeah, impulse up, correcting down. I think I measured this from the wrong area. Either way, I'm more worried about this demand zone. I'm looking for that possible bounce there. And you got the earnings coming out. So if you wanted to, you can get out before the earnings, get back in after the earnings on that day, or you can simply try to hold on and make sure your stops are in place. But that's a little risky. You know, I'm not a big advocate for novice traders or anybody who's relatively new holding on during earnings play. It's better to exit, miss out, than it is to be in and wish, you know, with a lot of regret, wishing you were out. So just be careful, be aware that's coming up. Anyway, Qualcomm's another trade idea. 90% of the time, this is showing it only has 10% bullish moves and wins that way. It's a 5% annualized return over the next well, several weeks. It looks like 9th of January until 28th of January. But uh, their average move, 5% to the, uh, sorry, downside, not upside, downside. And only 10% winners up. So with Qualcomm, we do have a nice area of supply here on the daily chart. Rally, I'm sorry, drop, base, drop. So looking about 121.71 to 127.95, target one, 94.70, target two, 93.21. That's what I got on Qualcomm, seasonal play, and technically it has a great setup. So that's what I got for you this week. Again, if you got any questions, feel free to email me, brandonwendell.cmt at gmail.com. You can hit me up at TraderBW on Twitter as well. Uh, thank you for being here, and until next time, trade safe, trade well, and take care, everyone. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like. Appreciate it.